Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be uh, making over this, uh, this blanket chest, uh, but I'm going to turn it into a toy chest uh, for my granddaughter. She's three and um, I was very tempted to paint this a soft pink and um, make it really obvious that it's for a little girl. But I decided to uh, make this something that uh, can kind of grow with her. So I decided instead to make it more of a French country style. Now this piece is really short. And um, I think it would probably look better if I were to put some legs on it. Uh, and if she grows, uh, I, I most likely will do that. Uh, but right now, I wanted to keep it, it short uh, because she's very small for her age. And uh, I want to make sure that she can get her toys easily. So we won't be adding any legs to this one. Um, I'm going over this with just one coat. And then I do have to go back a couple places for a little touch-up coat of the Drop Cloth Dixie Belle Chalk Paint. Um, this was a really soft white color uh, without being a real stark white, and it worked really well for this piece. This wasn't a finish that I thought would bleed through, so um, I just took my chances and didn't do a clear coat first, and uh, it worked out just fine. I didn't have any bleed through issues. Now I've chosen this um, stencil. And um, I don't know many of my stencils I've had for so long that um, I don't even remember where I got them or what the name of them are. But um, I just chose this because I wanted it to have more of a French country look. And as you can see here, uh, I thought that I had taped this down. I meant to and didn't. And as soon as I started uh, stenciling, it, it tried to slide. So I, I just had to be very careful and place that exactly back where I had it. Uh, and and then there I didn't have a problem with this. I was afraid I had messed it up. So I want the black here and I'm gonna soften that by just lightly sanding over it when it's finished. Uh, but uh, I wanted the black and, and then this color of pink. Again, I can't help you on the color of this because this was an oops paint. Uh, that I got at Lowe's, uh, so it you know it's just more of a soft rose color. I don't like bright pinks at all, and this was just one of those colors that really worked out well, and and I think it uh, coordinated really well with this black. Now I didn't mention that I did put um, put some uh, paint on the inside of the lid only. I left the inside of the trunk, the rest of it, just the regular wood color. Now, I usually use a makeup sponge, and that's what I was using on the first part of this stencil uh, because I have a lot better luck with those uh, in, in having a neater stencil finish. Uh, but because this little area here between this, this black is such a small area, I, I had to uh, use a stenciling brush. Um, and if I'm really, really careful with it, sometimes that works out. But um, I just have so much better luck with just a regular makeup sponge. Now this little uh, chest is is kind of dressy already because it has all that curviness to it. Uh, so it looks like it belongs in a little girl's room anyway. Uh, but I thought this pink and black was a, a really sweet addition to it. Now this, I do know the name of this stamp. This is an IOD stamp and it is called Kindest Regards. And I use this stamp a lot because of its size and uh, you don't have to uh, ink up the whole thing if you don't want. And sometimes I like for the edges to kind of fade out. Uh, but, and I didn't want this to be, um, just to be straight up and down. I wanted it to just kind of come off the side at a slant and uh, it worked out really well for this area. And it just adds a little something, uh, but I like that haphazard look 
And uh, so now I'm going to be adding an, another stencil in the center uh, using those same colors that I used on the top to kind of bring that together. And um, I won't use this whole stencil, just, just the part that fits well on it. And this stencil is also overlapping my uh, script there on the side. And uh, that was intentional. I like that look. And again, I'm just tapping that on with, the, with my makeup sponge. And if you haven't tried a makeup sponge, you really should. It, because it gives you something to hold on to good. Uh, and, and it just, I think it really does a, a very good job with these stencils. And obviously you don't have to use these same stencils. Just uh, kind of, I'm just kind of giving you an idea and you just do what you have and uh, the look that you like. And maybe you do want to do yours uh, with something that is more for a little girl. Uh, but the main thing is just kind of coordinate the, the colors on the top and the front. And, um, and then, like I said, I just added a little something to each end to kind of bring it together. Uh, so now I think that that looks really pretty over the top of that script. Uh, but I have another little stamp that it's almost like a little uh, stamp that goes over an envelope. And I use it a lot just as a little random stamp. And so I'm going to put that there on, on that empty space on the top right. And I think it adds just exactly what this piece needed. I don't like a really uniform look. Uh, and... And that's why I didn't want to do the same stamp on each side. And I really love how this piece turned out. Uh, and now I'm adding a, uh, a white wax. Um, if you've been watching me long at all, you know how much I probably overuse white wax. Uh, but I just love the feel that it gives. And um, I love the look. Of the white wax and in this case I don't know if you can see it here but on that uh, on the right side of this trunk all the way down that corner there you you can see little nail holes and I probably should have filled those in with some putty first uh, but I didn't really notice them until I painted it and so I'm going over that really well with the white wax, making sure that I get the white wax down in those holes. And then when I wipe this off, you don't even see that they were there. It just really cleans this piece up and, and gives it a lot better finished look. And it seals that chalk paint really well and, and gives this piece a really good feel. Uh, now, I just use any kind of white wax. Uh, this is a paste wax, as you can see. Uh, it's not liquidy. And um, the finish that the paste wax gives is incredible. And any, any kind that you want to use, I haven't had a problem with any of it. Um, the liquid waxes, which Waverly is more of a liquid wax. And the issue that you might have with it is if you don't seal the piece first uh, with a clear coat, then it, it may take your chalk paint off because it gets it so wet. Um, but I still like it. And if I, if I really need to distress a piece, uh, then I just let that wax coat do both the distressing and the sealing. Um, and sometimes that's a really pretty look. But in this case, I, I didn't really want to distress this piece. And so uh, I just wanted to use that uh, more of the waxy feel. And it's great that you can go right over these stencils and right over these stamps because I do with the stamps use stays on ink. And uh, once you let that dry for you know even five or 10 minutes, you can put the wax right over the top of it and it, it there's not a problem at all with it smearing or uh, or anything. And then, uh, like I said, any minor imperfections in the wood, and this, uh, especially if you're going over white already, 
this um, this wax will just fill it in. You can see here on the left the little screw holes that it even filled in. So obviously I did go back and fill in those other screw holes, uh, but I didn't paint that inside because it was in such good condition already. And uh, I feel like this uh, furniture piece was very easy to transform and I think it turned out really cute. And as always, I put my little stamp on there and obviously since this was my granddaughter's piece, I had to put her little stamp on there with some scripture. So thank you for watching and I hope you have a great evening.